you guys. Yeah. And um, just since we're going to wait just another minute or so to get going, but we'll get kicked off. Um, stay to the end because we're going to give away another uh, uh, gift that you guys can use in yeah. your next fundraising New to help gift. you raise more money. So we're yeah. That. Um, and that's also Jason, let's, let, for folks that um, future reference, if you can't make it on Thursday this time, no worries. But we just have a really cool um, revolving system where if you do register and you're not on in li uh, live for the webinar, we'll send you the recording. That's kind of how we capture your data to let you know that that we're, uh, you know, to know that you are interested in seeing it and you're going to get the recording regardless of whether or not you're on with us in real time. Just so, make sure you register. But we're yeah, also doing two sure. things. We uh, we started doing not only the the live version where you can see us. Uh, but sometimes I know that you may not want to see us because I've got a face only a mother could love. Um, and uh, Don't say Sean, that. Don't you know, hey, Sean. Hi, Shelby. Shelby. Hey. Hey, there you go. Trevor's wife's name Shelby, and she is just my a favorite wonderful, name. wonderful person. That's my favorite name. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> my mom is Shelby. We're going to get things kicked off. We're going right. to get things kicked off and get things rocking. And so we are so glad that you could be here today. Um, you know, we, we've been talking about a lot of different things and fundraising strategies, and we have been talking to organizations, a lot of you uh, from all over the country. And, and a lot of the questions, we, they're, they're repeating questions that keep coming up. And we just wanted to address some of them and talk about it and also kind of have a roundtable. So if you guys, hi, Nancy. Uh, so if you guys have some uh, question that comes up, please go to the Q&A down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. put your uh cute put your put it in there and we will get to it i promise and what we're going to do is if some of the questions we do we're going to just i may just do an invite and bring you on and mm -hmm. that way we can talk about it and so everybody can get the experience shared both ways so i uh, mm -hmm. you know we really want this to be a round table and get your feedback and your thoughts uh we're going to share some what, what we believe to be some really best practices um things that have, we've we've learned over the years but a lot of these questions are coming up, especially coming out of 2020. Now we're in 2021. And is it different? Is it the same? And we have a lot of experience um, seeing that and also events that are happening already and things that are being very successful. And then also, unfortunately, some of the things that are not. So we want to share all that with you. There's a lot so, coming down the pipe these yeah, days. That's for sure. uh, you know, as always, my partner, uh, Trevor Nelson, um, you know, he has got a incredible amount of, you know, knowledge within the uh, trip space and stuff like that. Um, myself, Jason Ledlow. And so we're really tickled to be here. So without any further ado, let's get cracking. All right. So I've got a couple things that I really want to just bring up um, and I'll pop a slide up here and talk about it. But two of the things that have come up over and over and over again are timelines you know first of all talking about hybrids you know what do we do so i've got some just thoughts and uh, some things that we've seen that have worked really well with hybrids we've done a bunch of them now because i know not everybody around the country is the same there are a lot of people that are just going straight to live events there are some that are saying well we're not quite there we're having to restrict because of whatever the state or city mm -hmm. may be doing maybe holding us back um, and then some that are still doing virtual but we're we've talked a lot about virtual so we're really going to talk about live and hybrid today, and just really some things around it. So um, the two things, you know, one of the two, two of the things were hybrid uh, timelines. And the second thing is, what do we offer? How do we do our auction? So I'm going to just jump right on that. And the first thing is, is I want to talk about timeline. These are, you know, whether you're doing a hybrid event or a, li a live event only, these are really critical rules that over 30 years I've seen are, are what I believe to be you know, just kind of hard, hard rules. I, I just, whenever I work with a, a client or, you know, directly, um, these are some of the things that I really uh, want to do to create those, that uh, stuff. And so timeline is raise money early. Um, what I mean by that is you want to get in here, get your fundraising over early in your event. A lot of times everybody wants to push that to the end because they've got honorees, they've got, you know, things that they want to talk about, mission drive, which is so, so, so early. Um, uh, but I really want to just suggest to you that put your fundraising there first. Now, my, I've always said that, you know, there are three reasons we do live events, uh, raise awareness, celebrate, and raise money. And it's kind of in that order. But 
fundraising is so important and we want to get that over with as early as we possibly can. So just kind of showing you here on the slide, what I like to see happening is that you finish no later than 9 p.m. your time. There's a couple of reasons for that. Um, whoops, sorry. There we go. Uh, the reason that I like nine o'clock, because, uh, and I don't know, we can do a show of hands. How many of you guys have been to an event, whether it was yours or another event, and at nine o'clock, all of a sudden, the room starts emptying out? Well, it has a couple of reasons. People have to go to work. People have to get out there. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and babysitters. You know, I've got my sitter set up. I've got to be out of here. I'm going to pick them up at 930. So I've got to get it out, check out, get those things done. So, you know, you start trying to go past, you know, 8, 30, 9, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and you're still having your live auction going on. It's going to be tough. I'll give you a great example. There was an event that uh, had 600 people at it, 600. They got up, they had two politicians, not one, but two politicians, and they did not restrict the time. I love politicians. They're great to have at our events, but if you give the politician, no matter who they are, if you give them the microphone, they will not give it up, okay? So you've got to really be careful. But the point I'm making is between the two of them, so that was they had a, uh, this, a, I'm sorry, I'm going to get it out here in a minute. They had a politician, and then they had an astronaut. Well, obviously, everybody wants to hear from the astronaut. And, you know, okay, some people want to listen to the politician. But between them, they spent two hours. It went from 600 people to 60. As soon as the astronaut finished, it went to 60. So literally, you've got all the fundraising, pe the people to raise money is gone because they're done. They're ready to go. So get it done early. Um, I call it the golden hour of fundraising. Make sure that your event is timed out to where it does not last any longer than an hour. Because after an hour, everybody's ready to get up and go get a drink. They're ready to go to the bathroom. They want to, you know, do whatever. They're ready to start visiting and get back to, the, to what they do. So 45 minutes is probably the maximum, I would say. And I'm talking really live events, um, but also this falls into hybrid. So I really like to get it done early. Fundraising first, celebration, you know, do that to start off with a mission drive. So just keep those rules um, in, in your uh, back of your mind when you're doing it because they work. They just work. Now, that doesn't mean that anything else is going on, um, but really those are two things that are really, really important. So again, and I'll just pop this up here again, raise your money early, get that over with. Um, so, you know, you want to get your uh, live auction uh, your mission drive, fund a need, all of that finished up and finished no later than 9 p.m. because people are ready to go. Keep it to an, less than an hour. Um, you know, a couple of ways that you can do that. Oh well, my gosh, I'm still pushing. <laughs> um, you want to the reason that you wanted that. it was a, it was a real. It's a subliminal thing. I'm trying to get you guys to buy packages. Not really. I, that's not that's not the intent. Um, but what I want you to think about is, is doing that. So I want to get some questions out here. I want to just give those yeah. things. And if you guys have any questions about your timeline specifically, please, let's hit them up. Uh, this not, is not necessarily about the timeline. Jason. I have a question actually really quick that just popped mm -hmm. in my mind. I want you to give us a few examples of how we can raise money pre-event. I have a couple ideas of my own, but just throw some things out there because you're talking about raising money before mm -hmm. the event even begins, the live portion. Okay. Just so there's, there. there's two parts to, to it is pre-event yep. and night yep. of. So yep. everything I just got through talking was really night of. Pre-event, you know, obviously there's underwriting and sponsorships. Yep. Ticket sales, table sales, and then pre-commits. So, you know, can I get a show of hands? How many of you guys do a fund a need or a, a yep. mission drive, you know, where you just ask for donations? Yep. One, two, three. I, I hope that you all are. If you're yep. not please put that in, in there. They're good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So raffle tickets. Robert says raffle tickets. One of the things, that, one of the things really that, that whenever, you know, we work with organizations or if somebody calls me and asks me or something like that, I talk to him, go to a donor that, you know, has been a great friend of your organization who has deep pockets, a significant capacity to give. And here's how you make the ask. And I'm just going to role play for you, Trevor. Hey, you know, we've got our event coming up Saturday night mm -hmm. and you've been such a great supporter 
And I know you could write a check for the whole thing, but we're trying to raise $100,000 in our mission drive. I'm not asking you to do that. What I am asking, would you be willing to make a significant gift that we could turn and use to leverage the room? Yep. Smart. And it's an easy way to ask. I don't ask for a specific dollar until they say, well, what are you thinking? Well, you know, if you wanted to do 50 grand, that would be great. We could do a match challenge, get another 50,000 out of the room, raise a hundred thousand. And I'm talking about somebody who can write a check for 50,000 and not miss it. I mean, these are significant. Uh, and maybe you get a couple of people. I'm trying to get five people to write, to get 10,000 a piece. So that way we can start off and start it off. I've we seen it work. I've seen it work in rooms where even because, because some folks are going to say, maybe we don't have donors with that capacity. Possibly. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. I've seen it work with a $2,500 yeah. uh, offering and I've seen, and I've seen $50,000 yeah. uh, raised in that moment, which I thought was pretty amazing. I saw that happen in person. Um, and that was great. That was really and, great. So, you know, and just a caveat to that, when I yeah. say 50,000, let's just say, for example, and I'm just riffing here. So let's say it was a thousand dollars, say it's a thousand dollars per whatever it is I'm doing. I'm sending, we're sending kids to camp. Okay. That's yep. what we're doing. We're yep. sponsoring kids to go to camp. It's a thousand bucks a pop. I'm asking, when I ask, I never say, will you give $50,000? Will you sponsor? Kids? Totally. Will yep. you sponsor that's 20 awesome. kids? Would you sponsor smart. five kids? Yep. So Super that's smart. the way to do it. There are, there are a lot of auctioneers and, and MCs that, that it helps them if they know they've got some, something to go in. Yeah. But I've also, I'm, I'm kind of a wild card. I've asked for $25,000 and got a guy to raise his hand. And then afterwards he said, well, if Jason would have told the executive director, well, if Jason would have asked for 50, I probably would have gave it. Right. I'm too damn old and right. too damn rich. So right. don't be afraid to get those money. So that's really, those are the things to get beforehand yep. that will really benefit. Yeah. Um, one of the questions I've had, do we raise money first or do we raise money last? It's up to you, yeah. you know, um, if I, I've done it both ways where we did the fund to need first and then we turned around and uh, raised money at the very end. So, um, you know, it, 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 so all those things are um, when you do that, don't be afraid of that. Just make sure that you have that mission drive in there. Um, and then, you know, what, how do you keep your timeline down? So some of the things, raffle ticket sales, exactly. Um, yeah. You know, we, we talk about the golden ticket. And if you haven't heard, we've talked about it a lot of times. You sell 100 tickets for $100, raise 10000 and they win a trip um, or an experience. It could be, you know, it could be $250 tickets, raise 25000 mm -hmm. We have a lot of organizations that are using our golden ticket. They're selling out before the event even shows up. Basically, everybody shows up, draw the ticket, and it's oh, it, that's the deal. They just got to, they start their auction off that way. We just raised ten thousand dollars. Woohoo! Right. You know, right. so there's no right or wrong on that, but just make sure you do it within that hour. The last thing that I, I'm just as far as that goes, I recommend a maximum of five revenue generators. Five. So let me give you an example. So one could be the raffle tickets, a golden ticket. Two would be your silent auction. Three would be the live auction. Four would be the fund to need. And five, you can come up with something. Some I've had some organizations say, you know, we just love doing a wine pull. It's kind of something we yeah. do. It doesn't raise a lot of money, but it's something. Okay, there you go. You've got five. Mm -hmm. We've done mm -hmm. two rep. We've had people do two raffles before. We did a uh, yeah. event one night where we sold. Um, we did a golden ticket and uh, raised twenty five thousand dollars. And then we also did another raffle for a Rolex. They got it. We, they got an underwritten and we raised $35,000 off of that. So between yeah. the two raffles before we ever during the night, now it was a big crowd, 600 people there and it was plenty of people. So uh, about being creative. So, yeah. Yeah. Get creative. Uh, any other, all sorts of fun, interactive games. Yeah. In, yeah. Any, you know, to give you an example though, um, there's an event uh, in, in Texas um, that I got brought into a few years ago and they asked me to come help them. And so we did. And they were a dynamo of energy. I mean, this, this ladies group, I mean, they were really good, mm -hmm. but they had like 35 revenue generators. Yeah. So from the time you walked in the door to the time you got to your first cocktail, to the time you went to the bathroom, by the time you did anything, you were getting hitting up for money. And so what happens is people start thinking, well, you know, I already made my donation. I'm done. So make it, you know, keep that in mind while you're doing it. You don't want to, you know, deplete them out on just little nickel dime stuff. It just kind of yeah. gets a little bit old. We took them down yeah. to five. We got them under the five and they went from a $75,000 event to a $250,000 event in one year. 
So we concentrated that giving. Um, so You're also alluding to scar scarcity and yeah, supply. I mean, supply yeah. and demand. Yep, yep. Um, Which is good. So, okay. <clears throat> questions. I know somebody has to have a coming. question because I couldn't yeah. have covered it all right there. So any questions or, you know, suggestions, some got so if somebody's got some say, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll bring you on here um, or don't have nothing's to. Off nothing's, yeah, off nothing's off limits. Nothing's off limits. And limits we can that. talk about anything. Um, this is really a round table time. We want to just open this up. If you've got an event coming up and while uh, maybe you guys are thinking of a question, I'm going to ask for a poll real quick. All and so, right. Here, the first one is just, you know, it, are you going to do a live event, a hybrid event or virtual? So, Nancy. you know, if you don't mind, just pop that baby out there. And I just want to say, I know that some of you are under restrictions and you cannot do a live or a hybrid. So, you know, if you can, though, get people in the room, even if it's if it's 100 people. Um, it makes such a huge, huge difference. So gosh. yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing a ton of, we're seeing a ton of success with the hybrid model. Actually, I actually don't think it's going anywhere as a matter of fact, in certain locations. Um, I have a question from Nancy Strutzenberg. Um, she's hosting a hybrid event, she says, uh, and Nancy, let us know where you're from and all that as well, please. Um, but she had a question for you, Jason, what is the ideal number of silent auction items for a hybrid event? So this would be essentially mm -hmm. online and on a table, if that makes sense. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so let me, let me, one of the things is I, I believe in scarcity. I've been at events where there were, you know, a hundred and there were, you know, 200 people, which means really, you know, in the live world, a hundred couples means a hundred pay, hundred, uh, you know, checkbooks. If you want to want to think about it that way. And they had 175 silent off items. There's just way too many. Um, uh, you just okay. really, you've got to cut that down, put stuff together, combine it, you know, get it down. I'm kind of a, you know, it really depends. I'm in that 30, 40 item range is where I like to be. Mm -hmm. You could have 150 items that were donated, combine those up and, and create some gift packages. Let's say that you've got um, a spa package and you've got something from a, a esthetician and you've got some lotions and, you know, some little packages stuff. package it all up, yep. put it all together and call it, you know, it's a, you know, spa day, put that on there, list all the sponsors, the, the donors on there, one brought to you by all those donors. And you've got something that really goes from bringing, you know, maybe individually, you know, mm -hmm. hundred bucks for this and 75 for that and 50 for this one to bring in three or four or 500. We had a, we had a group that took all their gift cards and they had a bunch. They probably had 50 food cards, everything from Subway, you know, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, all these different gift cards. And they put in there, it said feed a freshman because, you know, Ooh. it's just a college freshman or something like yeah. that. Put them yeah, all together fun. and probably individual, you know, just the total was probably worth five, 600 bucks, it brings like $750. That's awesome. Because somebody yeah. didn't have to think about it. They just went and got it. So, hey, so let me ask a, you, let me a, ask you know, another I just, question. I really, that, that's my, that's just me. I, I like to be probably, a, you know, if you've got 300 people, 30 items, if you've got 600 people, you can jump, push it up to 50, 60. So it cool. really just depends right there. Hey, um, Juan has a question, Jason. I'm going to fire some questions at you. What's a good time frame between fundraising and the big events? As far as I want to say, what Juan's talking about fundraising at the beginning of events and the live portion. Maybe I already know the answer is about a week or so or a few days. Yeah, so, so if you're using a software platform, regardless who it is, what we're yeah. seeing having a lot of luck is we want that opened up seven days before, five yeah. to seven days. We've seen some 14 days. I think that's too long personally because mm -hmm. it just people kind of get tired of seeing it. Mm -hmm. Seven days. You start opening that item up. They can start looking at it, seeing it, start making their deals. Most of the bids are going to come in right there before. You're going to have people that aren't going to show up who can bid on items, who can who can compete there. And then the night of is when you're going to have it and close it. And so that way you can have your numbers and celebrate and everything. So that's kind of where I think of. Um, right into the next question from yeah. Courtney. From Courtney. Um, if we're having our silent auction run on a platform uh, starting before yes. the event, should we end it before the live event, during, or just after? Okay, that's a great question. So let me, let, me, let me give you some thoughts on this. If you are using software, 
it's okay to leave it open. It's okay. Because people don't have to get up. They don't have to leave their chair. They don't have to leave their seat. They can stay right there. If you're doing it the old fashioned way with a piece of paper and you're doing it, end it before the live auction. You don't want somebody getting up in the middle and people going over there and trying to bid on it. And, and, and if you're not using software, I'd highly encourage you to do it just because it raises typically, you'll see about a 30% increase in your things like silent auction, because people can bid from anywhere and they'll put max bids and do things like that. So that's really um, where, where I, I strongly recommend. So you can keep it going during the live, but I would suggest that you just say, ladies and gentlemen, you know, have the auctioneer, let's say it's five items in or something like that. And you've got eight items, ladies and gentlemen, uh, take a minute, check your silent auction items because we're about to close that out here in just a few minutes. So go ahead and make those bids because you've got somebody doing it. So there's not a wrong time. Yeah. You're not necessarily going to, but what I will tell you now, this is, this is a true thing. If you close it before the, the live auction and the fund to need, people will know how much money they have left to give. Because if I'm bidding on something that's five, six, seven, a thousand dollar item on the silent auction, silent auction, and I lose, I don't win it, and I know that I didn't win it. Well, now I've got a thousand dollars to go spend that I can spend on yeah. something else. Yeah, you're so, talking about strategy. That's awesome. Yeah, and yeah. so that's that's the thing you've got to think about because if somebody's and I literally had somebody say I would have given five hundred bucks, but you know I, I had five hundred dollars. I was over there. I didn't know if I was going to win, and they didn't win. And of course, yeah. you know, I said, well, go write a check. They'll still take it. I have one point and one question. Lisa has a great point, a uh, friend of HGA, uh, quality over quantity with items. We see that all the time. Jason talked about he had a great illustration with all the gift cards coming together, as opposed to like a lot of organizations will actually piece those out as individual items. We believe that we believe in because we see it firsthand um, uh, paralysis by analysis. So we do want to be strategic when it comes to how we parse these items out. And, and like Lisa said, that's a great point. It can't be overlooked. Um, I have a kind of a, um, a, a wide lens question, but I know you can answer it um, from Heather Gibbons. Uh, what does a hybrid event look like in theory and what part is virtual? Okay. Um, that's a great question. So a question. this is how yeah. we recommend, this is the events that we've done that are hybrid, how we recommend that, that you follow this program. And there's not, there's, there's not a, a wrong answer, or right answer, but what I recommend, again, get your fundraising over early because people are going to tune in and then they're going to tune out. But you, so what a hybrid is, so hybrid means I'm having a live event. I, it's live auction. I've got people in the room that, you know, auctioneers up on the stand, you know, he's up there selling, doing it. Um, you're right there. We've got the screen that, you know, showing everything going on, showing the items, but people that cannot attend or choose not to attend by simply looking at their phone, maybe on their laptop, they can sit here and watch the event see what's going on and bid right there from home. And that's how it works. You're, you know, the auctioneer is just having an auction. He's doing the auction in the room and everything like that, taking bids and the people that are bidding are bidding right there. And with our platform, there's actually a, a confidence monitor. So the auctioneer can see it and sees the yeah. name. So that way when Trevor Nelson, who's sitting at his couch in his underwear is still bidding yeah. on stuff, I know, yeah. and I can look at the camera and go, Trevor, 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 you're out, you're out, it's your turn. Yeah. You yeah, know, and we also want to give those donors shine when they're bidding. We so, want to, yeah. We want and so that's what it really is. And the thing we're seeing with hybrid events, people are attending who would never be able to attend because they live in another state that, you know, it's a, a let's say that it's a school foundation or mm -hmm. something that they have a connection to that they couldn't, you know, they still mm -hmm. give and donate. Yeah. Well, they get to attend, but they live in California now and yeah. not in, you know, in Florida. So making that trip yeah. is not going to happen, but they can yeah. attend virtually. So that's why yeah. it makes sense to do that. And yeah. Sort of it. I and, hope that answers your question. And if you have I any, think, you know, to, to go in deeper, we're glad to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, if there's any run on questions that we can embellish on more, as we always say, we're very easy to reach Jason at HA fundraising.com, Trevor at HA fundraising.com. Um, I, we just noticed Heather and everyone, obviously that, this has allowed organizations to cap to cast such a wider net. We've said this, if we've said it once, we've said it a hundred times. So apologies for the repetition. However, we've not the, 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 the cause of what's happened. We hate, we hate the vessel that caused this to happen. The outcome of COVID and restricted um, gatherings and what have you 
has actually, it's going to turn out to be such uh, a fortuitous um, outcome for organizations because you can cast a wider net because of what the illustration that Jason just said geographically, the, the internet, the phones, mobile bidding, the platforms that we use, it's completely opened up the world for these organizations to raise money where you don't have to be in the room. And it can still be an exclusive invite or an exclusive ticket or an exclusive uh, give. So mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're totally enamored with the outcome. Once again, we didn't like the vessel. However, we're here now and we totally believe it's like a, you know, it's, Fundraising right now feels kind of like they turn the fire hose on. And there are so many, so many organizations running this direction. And we, I'm speaking for you, Jason, but we are under the impression that that the hybrid model could be the best model, you know, moving forward. And that's just, that's very subjective. Yeah, well, and but, it, dep but, it depends. I mean, it depends yeah. on your organization. It depends on your reach. It depends on your mission. Yeah. If you're just a very yeah. local mission, everything's wide open. Everybody wants to show up, then yeah. go with it. You don't need to We're go. We're seeing success in both. And here's the thing about doing a hybrid. You do not have to go spend $30,000 on AV cameras mm -hmm. stuff like that. Don't do that mm -hmm. unless you just, it's a big event and you really want to. You don't have to do, if you're a big national organization or you want to get the production quality, don't go spend a fortune doing it. You don't have to make it that, you yeah. don't need to do that. So you I know, have a question. To a camera. Go ahead. I have a, I have a question from Karen O'Connell and Karen in the chat, let us know where you're from. If you don't mind. Um, Karen had a great question. This is a question that comes up all the time. What is the optimal number of live auction items in your opinion? Okay. It's a great question. I put a maximum. So here's what, here's the simple math. Um, the simple math is, hey, Tacoma, Washington. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, Karen. So the simple is it takes, uh, what we use for timeline is three minutes per item. That means if there's a video, if I've got, we're going to describe it, we're going to auction it off. We're going to yeah. sell it. Maybe we can sell multiples on it, something like that. Three minutes is the number. So if I do 10 items, it's going to take 30 minutes. Now, it may take a little less. That's okay. Yeah. But that's the timeline that I want to use because I've got to build my time. And, you know, I see this, you know, doing this, we'd get, you know, the, the event company and they're given the timeline. They're saying, okay, at 12.06, you, you know, at uh, uh, 7.06, you start yeah. and 7.23, yeah. you stop. And we've got 46 items to sell. I'm like, it ain't going to happen. Possible. Yeah, that's impossible. My personal, my personal um, maximum where I think that you need to be is twelve. Mm. That is that is the max. max. I've, I've in my lifetime, in my my career of doing this for thirty years, I've done sixty. But mm -hmm. don't do that. It is a hard work. You're not going to raise any more money, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm a twelve guy. If you're doing a vir if you're you know a virtual event three or four or five at the max. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't, yeah. don't go deeper than that, but just keep it on the timeline and think about that. And then the other thing is how much money do you want to raise? Yeah. How, you know, really, I don't, I like to work backwards. If I know that I've, you know, I'm trying to raise a hundred thousand and we've got 50,000 pre-event, we're going to make 10,000 because we've got a golden ticket raffle. We're playing, you know, we've got a $10,000 commitment. We're going to try to double that to 20 or 30 grand, you know, somewhere around there. And I need to make 20, 30,000 my live auction. That's how I go. I do it backwards. Okay, this is what we've got to raise. And I'm very conservative with those numbers. Yeah. So that means if it's not a great night, it's just okay. We still hit our number. But I've lived, lived headroom, if you would. So that way, if it is a great night, we can raise more money. The only thing worse than not hitting our goal is having a people that are ready, flush with cash, ready to give that everything's clicking and we can't, you know, and we don't have enough stuff or we don't have the you right know. thing. So yeah. um, um, now forgive me, for, forgive me if you already mentioned this, Jason, I'm sorry, but this is, I think a good segue. So you mentioned the amount of items you had the three minutes per item. It's mm -hmm. flexible. Of course, obviously if there's a frenzy on one item. Well, it takes just five. do that. Yeah. Do just yeah. keep that in mind for your, for your stuff. Now mm -hmm. forgive me uh, if I went brain dead for a second. Did you mention how long you would like to see or what you advise the live portion of a hybrid event. Do we mention that already? I would do it we the same as a live. I would not change it at all because okay. the people that are going to do most of the giving 
are in the room. You're going to have people who are going to bid. You're going to have people that are going to buy and do that. They're going to participate from a virtual yeah. standpoint. Yeah. But the majority of people that show, they're number one, they're your biggest fans because they're showing up. Number two, yeah. they, they're right there in the room and the emotion is going to be there. Number three, you know, they've probably got capacity. They bought a table, they bought something. So they've got some capacity to give. So mm -hmm. those are, those are just my thinking, um, yeah. you know, and if you're not sure, so let me give, let me give you a great example. Yeah. If I've only, if we've decided in, in our timeline, we've only got enough for eight items and I've got Mr. Smith who always wants to donate this, whatever it is that he's got, it's a bobsled tour, you know, a, a ride on a bobsled. I don't know something, but he's like, it's got to be in the live auction. I really want this in a live auction. That's really tough. And that's just really frustrating for a lot of people because we want to honor the, the gift. We want to do that. But then how do, you know, it, it just doesn't fit because I've got everything else that's going to line up. And it just, you know, in the last year, it's brought $800 for the last five years. He always wants it in the live. You've got to just make a hard call on that if based on time. Don't give up because those slots in your event are precious because you've only got a limited number of them and you've got to maximize your donation, your opportunity there on that. So just really... Um, uh, be on, just really think about that as you're going through those items. Um, I'm going to just jump on to the next thing. Cause I think this will key some stuff up. And again, I want to keep this on time. We are going to finish on time as we always do within the hour and stay to the end because we are going to give away a gift for your next fundraising event. So what that is, and, uh, let me get to the next slide. Bingo. What to offer in a live auction. These are what I call the four main food groups. And I'm going to give you an example of these. When you're looking, because I'm going to turn this on when you're asking for donations about how to be specific. These are things that always do well. And, and one thing I want to remind you, everybody has knows we can all get on Amazon, have a whole pile of crap at my front door tomorrow, depending on where you live or the next day. We can do it. You know, it's so fun. People don't want to stuff. We're stuffed out. We can get all the stuff we want to anytime we need to. What we want to do is people want experiences and they want to travel. We know that for a fact. So, so when I say this, a domestic destination, let's say that we've got somebody and depending upon where you live. So, but I'm going to say here, we have some people in, in my part of the country that have homes in uh, Scott Phoenix, you know, the Phoenix area. We have people that have in New Mexico and um, Colorado. So, those are three really great. We also have some like in Destin, uh, Florida. So those are places that really um, uh, bring that on. And I'll put the slide. Yes, I sure can. So domestic destination, when I'm talking about a place, it's a place to go. Maybe it's a, you know, somebody's got this, like Grand Lake is not very far. I live in Oklahoma City in north, northeastern Oklahoma. There's Grand Lake and there's some incredible homes there. And somebody says, hey, we're going to, we're going to give you uh we're going to give you a week in, in our home there. Now I've got my, I've got my domestic destination. Okay. International destination. I understand that there's a lot of trepidation about international travel, but I can tell you just from our experience people are ready to go. Even if they can't go right now, they know that they can't go right now. They're still buying, they're planning travel. We did, we saw a survey. Um, uh, uh, we put a survey out or we didn't do it. It was done by an organization out of California, a travel organization. And it said of the people that like 1300 people that they surveyed, 70% were ready to travel. 60% were going to travel within the next 90 days. And of the top three destinations was Mexico, um, Costa Rica, and I think uh, uh, Maui. Hawaii. So, you know, it's Hawaii. Yeah. So those were the three destinations. Hawaii. We yeah. have also seen people calling because they've already bought one. We, they want to go to Italy. Italy is a hot place. And I'm just telling you, there's, it's, it's does exceptionally well. So mm -hmm. anything international, don't be afraid of it. Um, do it because it's still going to be there. A beach destination. I mentioned Destin a while ago, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to talk about this for just a second because 
when I say a beach destination, I'm talking about a place that a group can go to. Like maybe it's a villa in uh, Cabo. Maybe it's a villa uh, or, a pro, you know, we've everything from private islands to, to stuff. But people love to go to the beach. Regardless of anything else, they love to go to the beach. So consider that. If you've got somebody that has that um, place in Florida, there you go. I've got a beach destination. So now I, I've got that. And then a once in a lifetime. Once in, what, is, what do I mean by once in a lifetime? And this is where you can really do, like you said, you know, we're talking about having multiple items in your event. Okay. The CMAs, you know, country music awards is, is really, is always something that's really hot uh, that we see do well. Um, lunch with the mayor, lunch with the governor, lunch with some, you know, somebody who's significantly, I, you know, I had, we did a deal. It was breakfast with a billionaire and there was a, a local guy went and had lunch with him. It was 20, you know, or, I'm sorry. It was like, I think they had like 20 minutes with him. You know, wow. he, he shared his time and did that. Uh, we had another deal where there was a manager of an NBA team that came in for lunch. He didn't eat anything. He didn't do anything because the guy's just, he's, he doesn't like groups. It was just lunch. Yeah. He sat down with him, answered every question. There was like six people there, gave it. It brings like $5,000 because it was just a unique experience and something that was really cool. So think about that. Think about people that we know. Okay, go through our go through your list of everybody that you know you guys know. Do a people exercise, and if I think we've got a people exercise on here somewhere of one of the webinars we did, and if you don't, call me or email at jason at hjfundraising.com. I'll tell you how to do it. Um, and you know when when we do the people exercise, we say who do we know that might care, and then we look at can they write a check for ten thousand dollars and not miss it? Can they fill a table with people that can, will come and spend money? Do they have access? Access means my brother's an astronaut. My, he's really not, but you know, my, he, he is. But my brother, like my brother's a, a martial arts uh, instructor. He has two generations from Bruce Lee. His, in, his, Matt, his Sifu, they call him, which is teacher, was a guy named Jerry Poteet. Jerry Poteet was one of the three guys that was taught by Bruce Lee, the closest to him. So he's two generations. He's in the, in that world, he's very unique. I mean, it's just, there's not very many of them out there. And yeah. so, and he's, you know, goes around all over the country talking about karate, Kung Fu and Jeet Kune Do and all that stuff. So, but I have access to that. Um, so don't, you know, look at who they have access to their, you know, their sister-in-law is the governor, their governor's wife. Maybe that's where you do, you go and have, uh, you know, lunch in the governor's mansion. It doesn't have to be with the governor. It could be with the governor's wife. And you do yeah. a ladies' lunch and maybe use that for a buy-in. So those are things that really do well. Um, and and you know, concert. There's a we've seen where somebody took a they got a private jet. They got it had somebody that owned a jet, so they went and got that. Then they went and found tickets in a city that was just a cup like an hour away, and they got they said and they it was for six, sold for thirty thousand dollars. They flew from Tulsa, Oklahoma to Dallas, Texas, went to a concert, got on the plane and came home. It brings 30 grand. Ooh. You know, it was just so, stuff like that. Now you may say, well, I don't have $30,000, $30,000 buyers. That's okay. Yeah. It could be a hunt experience. If you've got people yeah, that like to hunt, creative. it could be fishing. Yeah. It could be something like, that. I mean, just go through and use who you know and create an experience around that. And you'd be surprised it, whenever you go to people um, who you think wouldn't be. And there's some of the top things, a chef, you know, we've got, uh, we've, we, I know a guy, he's was the uh, chef for the Royal family. He was with, for princess Diana and also for queen Elizabeth for a long time. And it's, and he comes to your, wherever you're doing it at, they have dinner. He fixes all the, all the favorite deals of the Royal family and tell stories about working in the palace. And it's just a unique once in a lifetime experience. And it is phenomenal. Well, I say that that's, that's secondhand. I've, I've got a friend. He said, that's one of the most exciting things I've ever done. You know, oh, just, it was that kind of experience. So those are things that you can do dinners. Yeah. Uh, who's got a, who's got a really cool home. Who's got a beautiful home that loves to entertain, go find them and say, would you be willing to do a dinner? Then you go yeah. find maybe the caterer who's catering your, your event. You know, you're paying them to cater the event. Ask them for a donation. Say, would you be willing to do an intimate dinner for six or yeah. something like that? Plus the, you know, the host, then they don't have to do the cleanup, the setup, any of that stuff. They just provide the home for it. 
th those are the kind of things that you can put out there that do really, really well uh, to fill those once in a lifetimes. We certainly want some more questions if there are any more questions, but there was another idea. Jason and I really enjoy good, strong coffee. So coffee with Jason and Trevor is an auction item that we're playing with and experience uh, and we're mobile. So I, I mean, we're, I mean, we're a couple of fun loving guys. I think it'd be really, really fun. I don't know how much it's going to bring in. So no, no promises, but we are working on something like that, which sounds a lot of experiences. So, Hey, I just uh, popped a poll. Oh, good up. poll. I, I just yeah. put a poll up real quick and I, and I do want to come back cause I've got something else to say about hybrid events that is, I just, I, it's not my idea, but it was somebody else's and it's fantastic. Um, you know, please just, if you have more than one, just this will kind of give me an idea of where you guys are worrying about what you're thinking. Um, and I'd love just to see the, um, the feedback. Those are good questions. Yeah. The, or those are good. Those are good options. Absolutely. Um, Sabrina asked about the slides. We're going to send the slides out with the Absolutely. recording. Yeah. We'll send the slides um, along with the recording. Yeah. And yeah. Hey, and if you guys have any questions after the fact and you go that email yeah. us, we, yeah, totally we, okay. we love to do this. We do it all the time. Um, happy to share time. There's no expectation. We're not going to try to sell you anything. Um, obviously we, we do offer software and experiences that you can supplement to your event. Um, mm -hmm. you know, when we're talking we about, talking. we're doing the poll, um, what we recommend is get everything donated that you can and yeah. use things like that we provide or other, uh, there's other providers out there to fill in the gaps. Okay. Yeah. Now the two biggest money generators that I believe in that you need to do in every event is a golden ticket and what we call is a craze. Um, and they will to combine, they'll raise you, you know, a 10 to $25,000. And we've got, we've, we've got a lot of success. Uh, yeah. clients recently that have just been raising a ton of money with it. So yeah. it's really recently, good. recently Lisa net net proceeds. Um, we've had events, uh, um, hybrid and live events where we've sold in the last two weekends between 12 and 23 of the all inclusive items. Um, at a thousand dollars net proceeds per item, yeah. so it's pretty. That and and that's not to brag. Obviously, I'm just giving you just real time data. We're very transparent, but that just also bleeds into the um, the lack of trepidation by some folks to buy travel right now. We want to let the market decide that, not the committee, so to speak. Um, and that also, you know, Jason made mention of you know Italy, for instance. You know, we have our, our fingers on the pulse of what's going on over there. We fully expect there are American travelers there right now buying property in large numbers, actually, but they have to quarantine for a small period of time. And that's not something that we're willing to do with our guests right now, um, unless they just are absolutely dead set on it. Uh, haven't done it yet. Uh, but we fully expect travel to resume there, barring any massive setbacks, which this is a very fluid situation and a moving target, mm -hmm. um, so to speak. But we fully expect to be sending guests there in fall. Um, and certainly into 2022. So that's why those are selling as well. Uh, but the all-inclusive packages, uh, we're completely floored uh, with how, how well those are selling right now. So um, pretty darn amazing. I got a question that just came in, Jason. Well, I want to just answer Lisa real quick. Lisa, oh, when we say they're raising 10 to 25,000, that's yeah, I net said that. dollars yep. to their organization. Absolutely. Absolutely. Net dollars. So yeah. Um, I, and, and just so you know, when we talk about this stuff, I'm always very conservative. We, we're very conservative about that. We don't want you to sit there and think, oh yeah, we're out here. It, we're very conservative on those numbers. We had somebody who sold 22. Yeah. It's crazy. I would not say that that's what we we tell expectation six to ten you'll sell yeah. six to ten just yeah. every time um and make a thousand dollars a pop so it's a great yeah. slot to to use so um, um, go, ahead, courtney, go ahead trevor with your question Cor yeah courtney had a question um you know talk about the golden ticket a little bit i mean where this is not a self-promotion courtney you can use the golden ticket that we provide there are other ways that you can um, mm -hmm. strategize and create one. But Jason, just do a, a quick rundown of the golden real ticket. Real quick. So real quick on the golden ticket. Um, we call, we use what we call the golden ticket trifecta, but here's mm -hmm. the, here's the three th sides of that. So basically it's a raffle. You sell a hundred tickets for a hundred dollars a piece. You can sell it for more. We, I'll talk about that in a second, but you can sell it for a hundred dollars a piece and raise $10,000. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's say that, you know, you use our golden ticket, which costs two grand, it's 1995, but it's $2,000. Um, so you're going to net that. So you sell them pre-event, 
you also, if you haven't sold them all, you sell them during the event. And then before you draw, it's the very first thing that you do whenever you start your live auction portion is you do that and your auctioneer or MC can sell it from the microphone. They can sit there and go, ladies and gentlemen, we it's time for the golden ticket. Everybody raise your hands, got a golden ticket. Okay, those of you that don't have a golden ticket, raise your hands because I've got 15 left. We're gonna raise $10,000. Number 261 takes one, number 185, number 75, number 325. Hey, we've got 11 left. Oh, thank you, sir. He wants five of them. Number 261 wants five. And you just go until you sell them out. Draw the ticket. Congratulations, you just won. You know, it's it's Andrew Gifford won. Yay, Andrew. Everybody cheers. Way, way, way. And uh, two strategies you can add to that is one, you can sell it at the live auction. I know all you guys really were set on picking the trip that you wanted to go to, whatever it was. I'm going to just auction one off. I've got another auction off. And so you yeah. can sell it one or two times there. Yep. Then the, the third thing, which is actually the first thing, is get it underwritten. We've yeah. got clients that are set, they're, they're underwriting a, go, a golden ticket they buy from us for two to $4,000 a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one, she said, I want two. I've got two events. They're within mm -hmm. like 30 or 60 days. And she got $4,000 a piece for underwriting. So yeah. that's really the, what the golden ticket is. And if you want to hear some more, um, we've yeah. got some stuff on it. We're, We're happy, to, it. happy to explain it to you and tell you how, you know, all the ins and outs. So, absolutely. Um, absolutely. you know, I want to come back to what are the biggest concerns? We won't have enough people come was the number one. And um, I want to just make a suggestion about that. And it's this right here. <laughs> this is the most powerful fundraising tool we're all carrying. We all walk around with it and we have it there. And so what I would say is use your board, um, your deal, people, if you're, if you're, you know, start selling and you're, you're struggling a little bit. Uh, because you've sent your email out, made your announcement, and you know normally by this time, and you can kind of measure it from years past. Well, gosh, we had this. Absolutely, yeah. without question, pick up the phone and say, "Are you?" Especially if you've got a virtual. If you're doing virtual and you know that they're or they're think you they're going to tune in virtually. Hey, Trevor. Hey, this is Jason. We're having our event tomorrow night. I know that you're set up, but I want to make sure that you and Shelby are going to be there and be watching and tune in. We really need your support. Really want you to be there. Follow yep. up with that. Have people around, you know, that are, that are volunteers, have people on the board, have people pick up the phone and call them. They're not asking them for anything. They're not, at, but will you please, you know, just want to make sure you're, you're aware and you're going to tune in because if you don't follow up, follow up, follow up with them, it's like watching TV. We can watch TV anytime. And that's the way people's mindset works. Um, so I'm sitting down, I'm going to watch it on my phone. I've got the event come up and then I'm thinking about something else. And my kid says something, you know, says, Hey dad, will you come out here and, you know, shoot some hoops for me? Or will you come play catch? Well, you know, I'm going to raise some money here. I've got to do that. It, it's that thing. But if they say, no, you know what, once you come in here, we're, we're going to help this organization. We're going to watch them raise some money. Just keep that in mind. You know, I mean, it literally is that's our, been our experience that we've seen people have the most success is really engaging with people prior to the event. Um, and so that's what I would just suggest, you know, doing that. Um, so I think we had a, cute, a question come up. Do we have a question come up? I, yeah, I, I answered that. Okay. About, you know, obviously, every time we have a question about a raffle or a drawing, it's, it really depends on your state. We're, of course, a, you know, small print. We're not giving any legal advice. Um, there are ways that you can can strategize and offer tickets. You can give away a golden ticket as a ticket to the e events. Um, we've come up with all sorts of great ideas. And Larry, we can share those ideas with you via email as well. I'm happy to do it. Um, and we'll give you some time to discuss that if you need. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's just such a solid product. The golden, back to the golden ticket. He had a question about raffles and what have okay. you. Um, um, and we, yeah, we're, we're seeing just a ton of success because of what Jason just dictated. We had an event uh, where they sold one, obviously, or, or gave one away to a winner, and they sold three more in the live auction. That's a massive win for that organization. Um, and these are these are highly sought after destinations, um, and we're thankful for them, but all sorts of ways that you can strategize with the golden ticket um, as a whole, right, in a macro sense. And we're happy to help. It doesn't have to do anything uh, with ours or it doesn't uh, need to have anything to do with our products. Uh, we're happy to help in any way, shape, or form that we can when it comes to strategizing for yours, uh, because it will be profitable. Um, 
I, I want to hit one more thing. Um, this is just a quick deal for hybrid events. And I, we don't have to do the show of hands, but if you're going to do parties, if you're going to have like multiple people that are hosting parties for your, whether it's virtual or hybrid or something, you know, to that nature, and they're going to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a, this is something that I didn't come up with this, but we have uh, uh, one of the guys that does a lot of events and, you know, we're fortunate enough to have a relationship with him and he refers us uh, to a lot of stuff. Um, they send a, what I'm going to say a, a bid, bid spotter ringman yeah, yeah, yeah. to the to party. The yeah, yeah, yeah. And all they're there to do, yeah. they're not taking bids. They're not doing anything. That's not their dude. They're basically the person to get everybody's attention. Yeah. Walking through the deal. Hey, all right, everybody, it's time for the event. Hey, everybody, come on in here. We're going to tune in because we've seen where the people have had parties. And I've, I've said this on happen on events that I did last year where there are 25 people there. Well, everybody's sitting there drinking, you know, they've got their wine or beverage or whatever, and they're yeah. having a talk and they're doing their things and they just missed it. They yeah. absolutely don't tune in. And that's just what we're going to do. We're social creatures, no different than in a live event. You know, if we wait for everybody to come sit down and go, okay, it's time for the auction. They're never going to do it. We've got to call, have a call to action. So having someone, maybe you've got a host, maybe the person that's hosting can do that, but actually putting somebody that's but typically, if you're hosting a party, you're going to be hosting. You're worried about making sure everybody's got enough cocktails and the hors d'oeuvres and the party stuff and the TV's ready to go and all that stuff set up and, you know, trying to do it. But having somebody that's outside of that, who's used to going, Hey, everybody, come on, let's go. And, yeah. and getting them to come in is a great way to do that. And you can, even if you use volunteers, you don't have to pay somebody, you can use a volunteer, but that's got to be their job. And they've got to be comfortable in doing that because some people say, Oh yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll get them in place. We don't have to have anybody. Doesn't happen. Yeah. I've been doing this for too many years to, and I got to stay engaged. It, it sounds like engaged. that they can do it, yeah. but it yeah. doesn't, they just, it's, you know, they're not used to doing it. So they become, they become very shy. So um, that was one of the things I wanted to hit. Um, last chance for a question. We've got like just yeah. seven minutes left. Uh, and I want to just, if anybody else has a question and then we're going to draw our winner here in just a second. Yep. The winner. Jason, you'll announce the winner, eh? Yeah, yeah, I will. Um, okay. Since I don't Thanks have any questions popping up, in. nobody's asking anything. Um, our hybrid setup won't work. Okay. This is something that I recommend everyone do. I'm not going to talk about COVID precautions, but guys, you guys can handle this. You know, put the masks out there, put the hand sanitizer down, do all that stuff, you know, spread your tables out a little further. Instead of doing a 10 top, do an eight top or eight top, maybe do a six top. Those are things that you can do to probably do it, but you're going to have to just go what your local rules are going to be and regulations. Um, but what I was going to say is uh, uh, hybrid stuff, do a run through. I do not lead any event that I'm a part of as the auctioneer. Um, I, I absolutely do a run through making sure that all the slides are up. And when I say a run through, I'm not talking going mic check one, two, one, two. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Okay. I'm good. I want to see every slide, every video, everything that goes through there, because if you don't, you're going to get to the event. You're going to get through the thing. Slides going to be upside down. The sound's not going to work. There's going to be something. And if you don't address it right before that, so let's say that the event start that, you know, the, the, op we open the gate, the doors at uh, six, five, 15, five o'clock, five, 15. I want to do the walkthrough. I, I just, me personally, I will not do an event without doing it. And I have in the past, I've, gosh, I've done this for so long. I remember I just walk up and they'd say, okay, here's your stuff. Go up and sell. They'd hand me a program. And that was before there were slides or we didn't even do overheads back then. And now, you know, most live events, you've got a video and a preview and all this stuff going on and, uh, you know, with the, the stuff. So I just want to do that run through and that's how you can make sure, you know, do the software. Do not, please, please do not stream this on Facebook or any, and you know, m there's two platforms that I would use. If you're not using something like ours that has an integrated stream, YouTube and Facebook probably Vimeo would be the only two that I could possibly recommend because the lag time, mm -hmm. because if you do it on Facebook, 
they're not going to see it for a minute later. They're going to be, so, they're, they're not going to be able to bid. They're not going to be able to participate. They're not, you can still stream it on Facebook if you want to, but they're just not going to be able to participate. So make sure that you're going to use a platform that's going to work. So, okay. Well, it's that time. Winner. Uh, let's just make sure. Um, we'll let Lisa reach out. Drum roll. Yeah. Okay. Drum roll. Come on. Give me a drum roll. Come on, somebody. Karen Smith. Karen <laughs> Smith is our winner today. So yay, Karen. Yay, Karen. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Hey, thank you guys so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Karen, just if you want to just reach out to, um, uh, I'm going to well, send you an email. Up. We'll send you yeah, an yeah. email out with that. Yeah. Um, uh, Lisa, if you'll just Thank email you. me yeah. at, at Jason at HGA fundraising.com, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll do that. And I can probably make a recommendation for you. Did you I put up the that. last, did you put up the last poll question that was guessing the color of your jacket? We have one more poll question about the color. We do it's, not have that. Cranberry. Question. Everyone, it's much. cranberry. Well, I don't it's think it's lovely. Cranberry. It's, it's not lovely. Cranberry. And it's lovely. cranberry. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Pocket square engaged. All right. Thank you guys so much hey, for being here. So we much. really appreciate it. Um, we just can't thank you enough and um, awesome. have a yeah. fantastic week. And if you have any questions, reach out to us. We'll, you know, answer. Yeah. Happy questions. to help. Happy to help. Thanks so much and share with everyone uh, that's in the space and we'll see you next week for uh, uh, some more silly goose time with Jason and Trevor and hopefully Amy as well next week. Yeah. So I, think we're gonna, I think we're going to get the real, the real amigo back tomorrow, uh, next week. So y'all take awesome. care. All right, see ya.